To give you an idea of just how much Tatum has struggled offensively, he's 0 for 11 on jump shots so far this summer. When Tatum is struggling this much offensively, he just doesn't add as much value as the other guys who are more used to scaling their game down and playing off the catch because he's not going to get the amount of touches he needs to find his momentum and his footing. How is JT the odd man? No, that's <laughs> just what I don't chip. understand. First, like team, he, first team All-NBA, maybe? The disrespect that Steve Kerr has shown Jason Tatum throughout this tournament makes me hate this team. So let's talk about Jason Tatum. As we all know, Team USA just won gold with the men's Olympic basketball. And instead of people going on and on about how great KD Curry LeBron was, how great Devin Booker fit his role, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo coming off the bench, Drew Holiday being a great addition. Instead of talking about all that, of course, people want to roll in the mud of negativity and talk about how Joel Embiid and Jason Tatum weren't receiving the amount of minutes that they thought they were going to receive. Now, I must admit, I am guilty of this myself. I do love my fair share of toxic, nasty propaganda. However, I do believe a lot of the energy is being shifted in the wrong direction, or at least there is a lack of understanding of who these two players actually were. Now, to knock on him, B, just quickly, I do believe a lot of people started to contextualize his flaws as a player a lot more in these Olympic runs, and a lot of that just has to do with the fact that he has never really had the responsibility to complement this much talent around him throughout his career. So when he was out there trying to fit alongside Curry, KD, LeBron, and whoever else was on the floor with him, he looked a little bit out of place. He was slow footed defensively, which kind of left him limited and defending in space, which is all of what a lot of the defense is overseas, especially in the Olympics. And then offensively, he was basically a clog. And I don't really mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a very accurate depiction of who he is as a player. And again, I just think that has a lot to do with the fact that that's just who he has been throughout his entire career. He has never really played on a roster that has been overly talented but a much bigger concern that everyone else had was Jason Tatum and why he wasn't receiving the minutes the roles the responsibilities that many people expected out of him entering this year now let's get a little bit more of a backstory here Jason Tatum unlike Embiid he's on a team where early on in his career they took the ball out of his hands threw guards out there with Kemba Walker Kyrie Irving constantly kept ball handlers around him to kind of help him initiate offense so moving off ball is something that he's pretty consistent with also the Olympic style of basketball where it's a lot of running running zone or switching, three-point shooting, dribble drive, kick out. That's a style of play that the Boston Celtics have thrived in over the past couple of years. And so it seemed like a very seamless transition for him with the Olympics. But more importantly, in his prime, potentially peak of his powers, first team all NBA, just got done with a championship run in a team that just lost Kawhi Leonard at the beginning of the run. It seemed as if like it was going to be a natural move to move him into that role and responsibility, regardless of what that was going to look like for Kawhi. Kawhi moving forward on this roster, but no. Instead, Team USA decided to have their starting five consist of a three-guard lineup of Curry, Booker, and Drew Holiday, and that was fairly consistent for most of this run. The last game against France, they took out Drew Holiday and put out KD, which, again, you would assume is supposed to be Jason Tatum's role, and there were even games where Tatum's minutes were very inconsistent, wavered all throughout the Olympic run, but I do believe the eyebrows really started to raise when he received DMPs. Yes, someone who was one of the best players in the NBA, fit the role perfectly in what you would assume this team would need, receiving DNPs in the Olympics. As Tatum did not play in both of the Serbia games, and the criticism towards the coaching staff really hit new heights in that last Serbia game in the semifinals because USA found themselves down 17 early, and Steve Kerr and the rest of the coaching staff still decided to not play him no matter how many points USA went down. Now, to conclude the story, it came out to be a fairy tale ending because USA came back from the 17 point deficit against Serbia, won that game in the semifinals, and went on to France and beat France. And even in that game in the finals, you know, Jason Tatum received some minutes, not much, only 11, but he still received some minutes. But of course, this kind of begs the question why exactly did Jason Tatum not play? And this has been an ongoing conversation for quite some time now over the past couple of weeks because not only do we have the Jason Tatum conundrum, but also why wasn't Jalen Brown introduced into the team once Kawhi Leonard dropped out? I don't know if Kawhi really dropped out. I think the Clippers forced him out, but you know, Kawhi is no longer here. Jalen Brown seems like the, again, a natural replacement for him because he is a wing, a big body, versatile defender player. Why wasn't he being replaced by him as well? And of course, a bunch of conspiracy theories. Oh my God, Steve Kerr, Eric Spolstra, Ty Lu, all these other coaches, head coaches for opposing teams. They just want to tear the Celtics up. That's the reason why they playing Drew Holiday and Derek White. They just want to rip it all apart. They're just playing mind games. Y'all just don't understand. And also Jalen Brown against 
it's Nike, duh. Come on, dog. You're not reading between the lines. Now, personally, I do think a lot of that is a load of BS. To be fair, I do believe that Jason Tatum also should have played in that Serbia game in the semifinals because the defensive scheme that we employed in the fourth quarter to slow down Serbia to 15 points, my goodness, we are dominating defensively, is a defensive scheme that Jason Tatum would flourish in. Like literally using KD as a POA defender, very switchable, being able to defend bigs from time to time. That is effectively who Jason Tatum was in the finals. So defensively, it actually made a lot of sense to play Jason Tatum. But I don't really think the problem between Tatum and Brown for that matter is defense, it's the offensive side. And this is an ongoing problem that I have been trying to convey to people for literally four months now. And I don't know why people don't wanna hear it. I actually made a video about it on this channel. Even in the video, people were like, oh my God, look, you're just hating. Oh my God, why do you, you just fuck, you just hate so much. Like y'all just sit here and believe that I'm hating. Y'all sit here and believe that Steve Kerr was hating. Y'all just don't wanna acknowledge the fact that Jason Tatum is a heavily flawed player and benefited immensely from being on a team that was ultra talented. And I do not believe that he should be given anything whatsoever. He should not inherit a starting role or major minutes on a roster that he does not best suit or best fit the needs of the team because the brother cannot shoot. His jump shot has fallen off the face of the earth and you all don't want to admit it. That's the problem. That's really the problem. Steve Kerr also talked about this is before I bust out the numbers. Steve Kerr talked about this as well, about how it's a math problem and how just from what Kevin Durant had produced as soon as he stepped in, it's really hard for him to find minutes for Tatum on the floor. Again, I think DMPs are a bit excessive, but Tatum was never, ever, ever going to receive any major minutes on his team if he could not make a jump shot. And I didn't want to put this on the timeline. I didn't want to make a video about it because I didn't want to come across as the hater. But over the past two weeks, I just keep hearing people just crying about why Jason Tatum, for whatever reason, they just think he's supposed to. It is his to have. It's his team, his roster, his starting position. He's supposed to play major minutes on his team. But the truth of the matter is, bro, he got multiple opportunities to prove to everyone in the showcase games where he was supposed to be in the hierarchy of the talent in the NBA. And he failed to do so. A lot of that continued over in the Olympic games. And for people out there going to sit here and say, oh, it's because his confidence is shattered. No, they were giving enough minutes. No, 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 no. This brother has not been able to make a shot since the beginning of the playoffs. And y'all have just been in denial about it. But let's get the facts straight. Jason Tatum, for those who do not know, didn't make a single three-pointer in any of these games. Olympic and showcase. And again, for people like to go sit there and say, oh, Steve Kerr, he know what he was doing. He, he, he shot his confidence. He, he shot it, his whole confidence going now. It's Steve Kerr's fault. Well, it's Steve, Steve Kerr's fault that um in the playoffs, 69% in the restricted area. Okay, okay. 32% in the paint non-restricted area. Yikes. 37% on mid-range jump shots. Yikes. 0 for 9 on left corner threes. Yikes. 1 for 2 on right corner threes. Okay. And 30% on above the break threes. Yikes. There is nowhere on the floor outside of a right corner three where he's made one of two. But realistically speaking, there was nowhere on the floor throughout the entire playoffs where Jason Tatum shot above 40% from the field outside of the restricted area. They ain't got nothing to do with his confidence. They ain't got nothing to do with, oh, he, he's not in the rotation. He need a better feel. Starter for the Boston Celtics in his run. Got major minutes for the Boston Celtics in his run. Practically took many shots he wanted to for the Boston Celtics in that run. And that's what he shot from the field field jump shot was gone and so when you watch the games themselves especially against serbia bro they were running a zone against us bam got ignored corner three top of the key because they knew not to defend him in olympic basketball bigs can just camp in the paint bigs don't have to step out they don't have to defend you and so you have someone on the floor that is a non-floor spacer that's a problem it's a major problem. And it's actually a huge reason why Devin Booker was the one who was actually closing out games because if we're being honest with ourselves, the role that D Book had played, especially in these last two games where he was closing out, that was supposed to be Tatum. Tatum was supposed to be out there in big moments, stepping up, knocking down shots, but he couldn't do that because he literally wasn't knocking down any jump shots, like literally. And then you have the other problem with JT offensively, and that is Tatum's not a ball handler. He's not a decision maker. He's not someone that you can rely on 
going to dribble drive, defense collapse, the floor shrinks on him because of the zone and he makes the read. And we know this is because we saw him struggle, not only against France, because I saw him do it like once or twice, but he was struggling to do that all throughout the Olympics, all throughout the showcase games, all throughout the playoffs. And that's been a plight of him. That's been a fault of him for a good portion of his career. Now, when you're on a Boston Celtics team where they space out the floor at practically every position, you don't have to worry that much about opposing teams shrinking the floor on you. But the truth of the matter is, if we're being honest with ourselves, there is a reason why Tatum wasn't playing. I do believe he should have at least received some, some minutes in that third quarter against Serbia when it was very clear that Anthony Edwards also didn't look great out there. And for defensive purposes, it just would have made sense to put Tatum out there. But I think that people believing that he's entitled to receiving these minutes, that he's entitled to receiving a starting position, that he's entitled with anything doesn't make any sense to me. And I find it very odd that like people like just chant, oh my God, give him a spot. Like why? Because things that he did in the NBA that he has not been able to do in the Olympics. Matter of fact, there's things in the NBA that he wasn't able to do. They still carried over to the Olympics and we need him for those things. Flora shrunk. They play zone. You need to be able to shoot out of it. Tatum can't shoot right now. And everything I just said about Tatum is applicable to Jalen Brown as well. It's a huge reason why he was not there. And I believe it's a bigger reason why I do not buy in this idea that because they won a championship, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are players that you all keep trying to make them to be. They're not. I don't think that Steve Kerr is a perfect coach. Same with Eric Spolstra. Same with Ty Lu. I, I don't think that they are. I think that they all make mistakes. They all have a bit of issues with some of their rotations throughout this Olympic run. Some of the offensive scheming was also very, very questionable early on. And some of the defensive rotations also in that Serbia game didn't make any sense in that first half at all. But I don't think that they're stupid though, especially when in particular, when it comes to the JT minutes, I think they're being very rational, very real. And everybody in the community is just crying about Tatum receiving minutes. But the truth of the matter is there's a reason why. And you all don't want to admit it. And it's just simply because the what role was he going to play on this roster? If you cannot dribble drive and a kick out initiate offense, table set offense, then effectively you need to be a floor spacer. Tatum isn't that, especially with the second unit that was going to feature Anthony Edwards, Anthony Davis, and Bam Adebayo. I'm gonna put another non-floor spacer? Like, what are we doing right now? And so as great as Tatum is as a player, and no one is taking anything away from Tatum, but it's just the reality that many of you all have been ignoring because they won a championship. And this is this thing when it comes to winning bias where your whole perception on a player just changes just because they were fortunate enough to be on a really great team. Not to say that they didn't contribute to that winning. Absolutely not, because Tatum did. But them winning doesn't remove their flaws. Tatum still shot poorly, couldn't hit a shot. That's a reality that you have to accept. And looking at those numbers, not just in the Olympics, not just in the showcase games, but also in the playoffs, hopefully we can all come to the conclusion that Tatum isn't as good as you all try to make him out to be. So to Tatum, congratulations. You won a gold medal same year you won a championship, same year you was first team all NBA. And to be quite frank with you, I hope you continue with your success because as an American, I would love to see you play better because in four more years, my brother, if you keep this up, I don't know where you fit in the hierarchy of NBA greatness. I, I would love to see more greatness out of you. And I don't believe that this is who you are as a player. I don't think that this is your ceiling. I think that there is still room to grow. But also, I'm not going to pat you on the back. I'm not going to sit here and just yes man you. I'm not going to sit here and stroke your ego because your team was great enough to win a championship despite the fact that you couldn't hit anything outside of the restricted area. I'm not going to do it. Get your jump shot back, become a better passer, playmaker, reader of defenses, decision maker, and we can have a conversation. But Bro, until then, bro, y'all got to stop. Y'all have to stop. Got this man's mother on the timeline talking about, oh, he not injured. I don't know. It looked like he is. The way he's shooting the ball. Man, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think I'm hating on Tatum or do you think I'm just speaking the truth? Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell. And if you missed the last video, make sure you check it out. I talked about Team USA and everything that went along with it. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Peace.